This presentation will examine non-standard normal distributions, sometimes called X distributions. Here's an example. A population is normally distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5. If one number is selected at random from this population, what is the probability that number is less than 43? So what do we know? The mean is 50. Call that mu. The standard deviation is 5. We'll call that sigma because those represent parameters, represent characteristics of the population. And we're looking for the probability that a number is less than 43. So we know how to deal with z's. So how do we convert an x into a z? Well, we're going to do that with the following rule. z is simply x minus mu over sigma. What does z represent? z represents the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. If z equals 1, that means x is one standard deviation above the mean. If z is negative 2.5, that would mean that x is two and a half standard deviations below the mean. So let's take a look at our problem. So here's our information, mean, sigma, question, probability x is less than 43, and our rule that z is x minus mu over sigma. So here we go, probability x is less than 43. I want to convert x into a z. So I'm going to subtract mu and divide sigma. To be fair, I've got to do the same thing to 43. Subtract mu, subtract 50, divide sigma is 5. At this point now, x minus mu over sigma simply becomes a z since z equals x minus mu over sigma. So now we have the probability z is less than 43 minus 50 over 5, or negative 7 over 5, or negative 1.4. So I want to find the probability that z is less than negative 1.4. I can do that by going to my applet. It's available from Stanford. And there is the URL if you'd like to find it yourself. And I will do that. We'll go ahead and pull up the applet and see what the probability z is less than negative 1.4 will be. So here we go. I'm going to plug negative 1.4 in the left box. Negative 1.4. And we're going to ask how much is to the left of negative 1.4. And you'll see our picture. This is approximately where negative 1.4 is. And the number that we get there is 0 0.0808. So the probability z is less than negative 1.4 is 0 0.0808. We can also determine that on Minitab. So pulling up Minitab, I can say CDF, negative 1.4. And what do we, and semicolon, we want a standard normal. So we're going to say normal with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And what comes back? Again, about 0 0.0808. So those two things together certainly tell us what that probability will be. So the probability that z is less than negative 1.4 will be about 0 0.0808. Well, can we also use Minitab to generate a set of data to see if this is relatively close? We sure can, and here's our simulation requirements. We're going to say random 10,000 C1. This puts 10,000 numbers into C1. Normal 55 period comes from a population with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5. We want to sort the data, putting it into C1 and C2 in order. And then our question is going to be, how many of those are less than 43? What is the probability that x is less than 43? So let's pull up Minitab and do that. So we're going to say random 10,000 C1 semicolon normal 55. 50 space 5, mean of 50, standard deviation of 5. Then we're going to say sort C1, C2. And we want to see how many of these numbers are less than 43. And you can see I'm going to get there fairly soon. Less than 43, 798. Notice nothing is exactly 43. In fact, this is 42.999783234. 98216. You're never going to get exactly 43 because it is a continuous random variable. So I have 798 numbers here that are under 43. But I can use that now to go ahead and get my approximate probability. What can I say? I can say the probability that x is less than 43 is approximately how much? Is approximately, we had 798 out of 10,000. 798 out of 10,000 
which of course equals 0.0798. very close to 0 0.08, very close to what we would expect to get based on our theoretical probability. Okay, in our next question, we have a population of women, and they have a mean of 64 inches and a standard deviation of 3 inches. So that gives us the information that we need to start with, namely that mu is 64 and sigma is 3. And now we're going to ask a question, that is, if a woman is selected at random, what is the probability that her height is between 60 inches and 69 inches? So that question will look like the following. Probability x is between 60 and 69. And to answer this, we've got to turn x into a z. How do we do that? Subtract the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So here's our relevant information. We're going to go ahead and subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation. So 60 minus the mean, 64 divided by 3. 69 minus the mean, 64 divided by 3. So it will look like this. And then x minus mu over sigma becomes z, and those numbers, of course, simplify. Negative 4 thirds, it looks like, and 5 thirds, or negative 1.333 and 1.667 approximately. So to go ahead and get this probability, I certainly can pull up my applet and see how that's going to work. So we're going to want between this time we want negative 1.333 and 1.667 approximately. We want to get between those numbers, so that's what we're going to get. And what does that give us? That gives us 0 0.860976 or about 0 0.861. So our probability that x is between 60 and 69 is the same as our probability that z is between negative 1.333 and 1.667, which of course is about 0.861. Now, I could also have determined that probability using Minitab. Let's quickly do that. So we're going to do CDF 1.667. And for emphasis, I'm going to say normal 0, 01. And that gives me 0.952243. So that's how much is to the left of 1.667. But I've got to subtract off that part that's to the left of negative 1.333. So I'm then going to say CDF negative 1.333 semicolon normal 0, 1. And what's that going to give me? That's going to give me 0912659. So I've got to subtract those two things. So I'm going to say let K1 equal, the first number we wanted was 952243. 0.952243 minus, the second number we want here is 0 0.0912659. Then I will ask it to print K1. And this will also give us 0 0.86097 or about 0 0.8610. Okay, I want to erase the data I have here. So I'm going to say erase C1, C2. And then we're going to remember what we had before. We had mu was 64. And we had sigma was 3. And we want to generate a data set that will have that, those characteristics. So I'm going to say random. We'll just do 1,000 this time. C1, semicolon, normal, 64, 3. Normal, 64, 3 mean of 64, standard deviation of 3. Then I'm going to say sort C1, C2. And then we're going to see how many of the people are in the range we're looking for. So I want the probability that we're more than 60, but less than 69. What will that be? I scrolled up and I found the first one more than 60. And I'm going to scroll down until I find the last one that's less than 69, which may take a few seconds. 65, 66, 67, 68, and 69 is 862. So 862 out of 1,000 is about 0.862, and that's my result.